serves as, just putting it on, the recording serves as a record of the meeting. So I okay, just no want problem. that to be clear. Um, just joining us is Carla Ingeman. She is part of the assessment team and works for the archives. And also part of the assessment team is Kim Dismont Robinson, the director of community and culture, as well as David Northcott. He's a policy analyst with the Ministry of Home Affairs. His role is actually compliance. So he doesn't join the meeting. He goes through all the videos and makes sure that we were compliant to the process. Okay. So that's kind of an overview of who we are. Um, how we got here today through the consultation with all of the um, schools earlier, um, it was deemed that we did not have any representation on our meetings from schools. So the minister okay. had agreed that as we did the history and legacy component, we will ensure that all schools have the opportunity to be represented. So in July 2023, the minister had announced in a public meeting that we would have the history and legacy component to the parish primary school decision rubric, which is how right. we got here today. So the purpose of today's meeting is to hear from the com school community representatives any information that they have and want us to consider regarding the history and legacy of that school. The information would be considered by the ministry and a rating put to it. The rating is on a scale of one to five of the four categories that were shared. So there's a maximum of 20 points. So we have the 55 minutes. Um, we'll advise you when we get to 10, if, if we're at that point and um, go from there. So I don't Go know ahead. if if you if your group were going to make a presentation or just have discussion. I was I, I was planning on just having discussions based off of what the I've information that was said. I okay, was, great. The highlighted questions. I was just trying to, you know, get information. Or I, I know a lot of the information, but I was just trying to, you know. Okay, great. Um, well, we're gonna yeah. hand it over to you. Um and you can get started. So All right, we so, can, I mean, we can go through if you want to formally go through each of the questions, because I know you have them. So the relationship be between the history and legacy of the school and the vision for parish primary schools, or you can just get on with what your notes in front of you. All right. Well, my relationship. So okay. my first relationship, I would tell you that actually, I'm actually, I went to Southampton Glebe and now I teach at Dalton Talk, aka Southampton Glebe. So that is my, I think, my biggest relationship. And I think, of course, I think every school always advertises their motto, but I think that my school has the best motto, strive, grow, and succeed. And um, and also, the school, which is now called Dalton E. Takam, she actually stayed in my neighborhood. I used to go to her house on a regular basis for, after, for Bible study, and she's retired from being the actual principal here mm -hmm. so I used to go to her house for years and years and she taught me so many different things that I even use this as a teacher now different quotes different types of uh, things that she used to always tell me when I used to go to her house at Coral Lakers Drive at the bottom of the of the ocean <laughs> and we used to just go and do so many different outside of Bible study we did so many different um activities so I think the actual connection is that I actually have a close connection because it's my alma mater. And of course, I like to represent not only the school, but the name of the school, because a lot of people don't really understand. They, a lot of my students think that Dalton is just, just, just a building, but they don't really understand it. It's a person. And so I definitely try to say that so students understand you're respecting the mm -hmm. person, not the actual building. Oh, that's kind of powerful. <laughs> that's good. Um, did, did Mr. Beam want to join or are you just going to go on and then he'll join when he can? Uh, I'm here. Did you want to add uh, anything to, to those comments? Uh, 
sure. Uh, you know, it's a good introduction by Mr. Wilkinson, for sure. And I could just add that, similar to Mr. Wilkinson, I attended Southampton Glebe from 1979 to 1986. And I am the youngest of five in my family and my oldest brother or my oldest siblings actually started at Southampton Glebe in 1964 and 1965. No, actually 1963 and 1964. And so we have five of us in my family who attended Southampton Glebe. My older siblings had the opportunity to be taught or be principled by Miss Mrs. Tucker. And then when I arrived at Southampton Glebe, Mrs. Tucker had retired, I believe. Mm -hmm. And so and so my first principal was Miss Vivian Cooper. And you know, it's a it was a pleasure to go there. And then also I can add that my mother. Coralie and Covey Bean was known as one of those, because every school has them, that one of those parents who become the bedrock or like the center midfield of the school. Mm -hmm. And so anytime there's an activity that was going on, as I can recall, the school will call her. Rather it was cooking hot dogs or rather it's uh, for us having to go to football games to West End or Port Royal or uh, Somerset Primary or Heron Bay, our little blue eyes Zuzu car carried at least <laughs> a, the whole team and reserves, you know. And so my mother was a person who was very much part of the uh, furniture at Southampton Glebe from 1963, 1964, up until I left in 1986. And today, I believe that Dalton E. Tucker still has a Coralie and Covey Bean Award that is presented to not the most outstanding student, but a, a student that has showed the greatest deportment and conduct that reflect that reflected the history and, and principles and ethos of Southampton Glebe over the years. And so it was so it's always been very close to my heart and very close to my family's heart. I can also say that when my older siblings started Southampton Glebe, my oldest brother, Alan Bean Jr., he started when the school was across the street at what is now the old fire station. And then my sister, Linda, she started two years later and the school was right across the street mm -hmm. at the maintenance shed for Fort Royal Golf Course. And so our history stretches back over different plants, you know, or different right. school buildings. One was started on the eastern or the western side of of the road, and and then it ended with me being at the present facility. And so there's a lot of history mm -hmm. that I can speak of, and then there's a lot of knowledge that has been imparted to me over the years that I will be glad to share. Obviously, it's knowledge that someone told me about. Mm -hmm. It's something that I didn't live, right. but it might be of some value uh, to the discussion. And so, yeah, that is basically my background in terms of of Southampton Glebe slash Dalton Itaka. Yeah, that's good. Um, well, we're open to, to hearing anything that you want to share, and we welcome you to share more of some of your stories, as well as uh, Mr. Wilkinson, if you could share also some of the activities that the school gets involved in, any acknowledgements, any international acknowledgements, any, I know the children get involved in, you know, the exhibition and things like that. So if you can just share too, as you go on, anything that we can consider. Well, like, I mean, like, so, so ironically, just last week, we had, we had this competition called the egg drop competition. So we tried mm -hmm. to think I have, I'm a, I'm a PE teacher. So I always have quotes, teamwork makes the dream work and all those type of quotes. So, so, so ironically, the actual fire station, they allowed us to use their very tall mm -hmm. power. 
of course, the commissioner. And, he and came. The minister, yeah, minister was there, and I think yeah. um, the whole team came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I right. So you go to my my school's Facebook, you see all the wonderful pictures. Mm -hmm. So I think us, us as a school, we do a lot of activities that that really tries to bring everyone together. So it's not just always I say there's no I in team. I always mm -hmm. try to explain it to to my my students. There's no I in team, or there's no me either. So I think when we do activities, it's not just always trying to advertise our success for others as well. Mm -hmm. To say that we're not the only, there's so many people who help us make this school su successful. Mm -hmm. And going back to what Mark said about parents, like I had my sports day, of course, my mom and dad, the, the, they're on my team. My mom is one of the oldest scoring. My dad is the one, right. So it's that whole, that community is connected. I went to Southampton. I stayed in Southampton. So I think the connection of my school is just so connected. It's like that high. It's like I always try to tell my my students. A lot of times we have a whole bunch of Wi-Fi connections, but we normally get to the highest one. And I think me teaching at my alma mater, that's a connection I want to stay mm -hmm. and be with. Um. If you want, I can go on to the Preston to amplify. I have a, I have a big long list, so I yeah. can we, we can we can move. Yeah, you can just continue on. Yeah. All right. So, I ironically, of course, I one of my neighbors, Kim Swan, me and me and him had a good conversation. So I wanted to kind of sit back and kind of reflect that people who pretty much who's connected. So I did some research. So pretty much. I have a long list of people who actually in parliament, of course, one's okay. right in front of you, Mark Bean. Yes. Right. Who was the president of White Hill, where I played mm -hmm. football before. But it's a long list of Walter Robinson, Walter Lister, Redden Peniston, Larry Scott, the minister, I mean, the actual minister, David Birch, Terry Lister, Michael Scott, of course, Kim Swan, Charlie Swan. It's sim the list is, is a mm -hmm. lot of people who went to Southampton Glebe. And ironically, I did some other research. Some of these people actually went to West End. They transferred. And I was trying to analyze why they transferred to her. And I think because of Miss Dalton Lee Tucker is probably okay. the reason why. Mm -hmm. I was trying to look at the actual the a the actual number when she was here and the time they transferred. I was trying to analyze. That's probably why people who were at schools decided to come to Southampton Lee because of what I think Ms. Dalton Taka was able to obtain while being here for those many years. So I mean that that's a long list of MPs, and then going back to Jerry. Kevin Smith, the one who everyone knows him as what? The person who wins mostly the most win for train for May. We have so many people. We have um Kimberly Jackson. We talk about the, she started what mirrors. So there's so many different elements that Southampton Glebe has created that makes this community. You know, as far as I said, of course I taught at Barkley before I came back to mm -hmm. obviously talk of. So I think that someone like her helped play a major impact when it comes to the community as well. I'm sure Mr. Bean has a whole bunch of a big list of people who actually <laughs> express the legacy that the school brings. Yeah, that is that is true. But I'm grateful that you actually gave that initial list and speaking to you, Mr. Kim Soon is a good place to start mm -hmm. because Kim. <laughs> It's like a walking history book. You know, he he remembers names and he takes great pleasure in reminding people about his connections within mm -hmm. the community. And just listening to Mr. Wilkinson say what he had to say just now, you know, I even didn't realize you had certain people, certain names or persons. I didn't realize they attended Southampton Glebe. So it just shows the, the impact not just at a parliamentary level or even a community level, Kim Jackson, who is certainly one of the founders of the Mirrors program, 
I was blessed to be part of that founding team also. And she is she is one of those persons, as Mr. Wilkinson says, has had a very important impact in terms of the development and cultivation of young people in the island. And I would like to touch more so on the history of the surrounding area and take it back as far as I can to show the significance of Southampton Glebe. Southampton Glebe was, as the name uh, represents, was a school that was built on the Glebe lands. And the Glebe lands, to my understanding, are lands that were set aside for basically the slaves. It was like slave lands, you know, and because we have today, we have Glebe Hill in Takastan, we have Glebe Road in Pembroke, yeah. and we have Southampton Glebe in Southampton. But to go back a step further, we also had one of the first governors in Bermuda, Sir, um, Mr. Daniel Tucker, or Sir Daniel Tucker, whose house was just up at what we call NOB Gate, which is adjacent to, what's it called now? What's the old traditions? What's it called now? DC Grill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. DC Grill, yes. Yeah. Yes. DC Grill. So when you turn in NOB Gate and head towards the old, the former base in Navy Annex, just at the top of the hill, you will see uh, some gardens. And that's where Daniel Tucker uh, used to reside. Okay. And that's one of our earliest governors in Bermuda's history. Now, the Glebe lands are significant because. Just a few, just a few things. One, we have what's called the overplus, and the overplus, which today we we you will see symbolically, is called overplus lane, which is just between uh, White Hill Field and Somerset Bridge. The overplus was land that was allocated as overplus by Sir Richard Norwood, who was the first person who carried out a survey of the island. And what he called it the overplus because when he got into the area, it was such a beautiful, lush, vibrant area that he became a little selfish and said, well, I'm going to keep this for myself, <laughs> you know. And so he, there's always a historically a gap between Somerset Parish, which started at Somerset Bridge initially, and Southampton Parish which started like down by NOB Gate. And th that gap was called the Overplus. It was extremely beautiful, extremely beautiful. They described it as a, a veil. I, be, I believe Mr. Packwood, uh, our, our legendary author, uh, had, had, had written about it. And so Sir Daniel Tucker being the, one of the original governors and Sir Richard Norwood uh, being the person who first surveyed the island, they had a major impact in the naming and the, uh, the development initially of that area. Likewise, you know, because it's Glebe lands, you will see one of the first of many uh, occasions and instances that occurred in the island within that area as well. So the first AME church, I'm told, was founded just is a place called Lemon Hill. When you turn into Port Royal Golf Course, and as you approach the first green, instead of going around the corner that would take you northerly, you can go straight. And that's what we call Lemon Hill. And that's where the first uh, black church was created in the island. And the reason why that was the case is because St. George's was the capital at the time. And the way of transport during that time period was via boat, primarily. You know, it, without it, it mm -hmm. took a very long time to get from the east to the west. And because of the, the lack of proximity to the capital, which was in St. George's, and because that was the Glee plans, Ones have to understand that the Gombe tradition actually has its origins and root 
in that area, in the in the on, in that very area of the Glebe lands. That's where the original gum bays took root in the country. Likewise, you have persons like Sally Bassett, who, as you know, we know, has she is represented in a statue at the cabinet building. Sally ba and was burnt at the stake subsequently, et cetera, et cetera. Sally Bassett came from Jennings Land. And Jennings Land, as you know, is just south of Southampton Glebe in the Jennings Bay area. You know, and that's closer to, I believe, Mr. Wilkinson's territory of, of yeah. Coral Acres slash uh, Granary Heights. But that is to show you the level of history and how far we go back. Now, the reason why the gum bears had the root there is because, uh, as you know, the gum bay tradition wasn't just like how it is today in terms of a, a function of cultural tourism. But the gum bay tradition was a tradition of uprising and resistance. And the reason why you find it having its root there is because of the distance between uh, St. George's and, and the Glebe lands. It was so far away that it allowed uh, the persons of African descent who were residing on the furthest Glebe lands from St. George's to be able to develop a culture that uh, that was indigenous out of Africa and has also roots that you could find into South Carolina with the Gala or Gula mm -hmm. uh, like uh, population. And also you'll find roots within the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos. And as a result, people wouldn't realize it, but just behind the original Southampton Glee plant, which is the current fire station, uh, Mr. Wilkinson will be aware too, because everyone who is born and raised in this area will be aware. There's a huge cherry tree bush or bushes on between the sixth, first, and second fairway of Port Royal Golf Course. And even when the golf course was redeveloped, that area, thank goodness, was not touched. And so the cherry trees are still there. The reason why that's significant is because that these cherry trees are sitting on top of the original grave site for the Glebe lands. That's where many of our ancestors are buried to this day. And so I'm very grateful that even when the government went and, and uh, redid or re renovated the Port Royal Golf Course, we, we had the wisdom not to touch that area because it's considered, even though many don't remember it, it's considered and should be considered a very sacred site. And so that sacredness has been reflected with the history that I, I'm speaking of. It then transitioned into when the Southampton Glebe was first created. And that history, that culture has been instilled or was instilled within the community as a result. So that is one of the major significance uh, or significant uh, historical markers for the area itself within the community, starting from Somerset Bridge all the way to Granary Heights. That's who Southampton Glebe, that is the catchment area of Southampton Glebe. And not only has it produced a, a large, a long list of prominent and not so prominent in a public perspective citizens in the country who, who gave a tremendous amount of, of energy and time uh, to the community. And so it's something that I feel it should be noted because we're talking about not just an educational institution, but a cultural and historical base for the entire country. I mean, how, who, can, who can say, or who can minimize the significance of the Gombe tradition? Mm -hmm. You know, and and to know that and many people don't realize it, but to, to now realize that that's where the Gombe is at the origins. And as you know, when the Gombe, because Sir Cyril, Mr. Cyril Packwood had mentioned that Bermuda had the, the most slave rebellions and uprisings in the region, the region inclusive of the entire Caribbean. 
It had the most slave uprisings and rebellions within the entire region. And the Glebe lands was actually the source or origin of those rebellions and uprisings. Hence why you had Sally Bassett being accused of so-called witchcraft, et cetera, et cetera, because she came out of that same environment. Okay, it's all connected. And so I will just give, I just present to you that that historical anecdotal mm -hmm. uh, information and that I think is very important that should be on your record. You know, and so from Daniel Tucker, from, whose house was only about, I would say, approximately maybe 400 yards from the corn Southampton Glebe uh, to Dalton E. Tucker, you know, who the school is now named after. That represents, I think, the kaleidoscope of history and culture, uh, not only for our community, but for the country. Yeah, all right. And also, I'm just going to just talk about the um, contribution and the history of the legacy. So I always think the legacy is strive, go, succeed. And so I went to Southampton Glee from 19... Oh, 1990. I graduated in 1993, and that's when, of course, it was the three years of of primary school. So, ironically, happened. Miss Esme Williams was my principal. To make a long story short. After she left, she was kind of the leader of Big Brothers and Big Sisters. So, as soon as I came back from college, I started working at Barclay. I decided to become a Big Brother. And Ooh. make a long story short, my big brother went to Southampton Glebe, Dalton Lee Talker. And now his name is Janori Smith. You probably always heard him on the radio, DJ Fury. And last year, he became big brother of the year. So that's where that baton, I just keep that, I think I call it a baton. Mm -hmm. The baton of success, we just keep on passing it at Dalton Lee Talker. It don't end. So I think that that strive goes succeed, that's the legacy. And I want to keep on passing that baton to the next student, parent, who's ever connected to our school. And that's my main objective. Can I just add, I totally agree 100% with what Mr. Wilkins is saying in terms of strive, grow, and succeed. It's embedded in my whole consciousness. And, when, and I consider it to be the best school motto of all primary schools in the island for sure because of what it represents. A man must strive or a woman must strive in order to grow. And, and from that growth, you can find success. And so then being blessed to be able to go to the Barclay Institute after it, it was, it was uh, I think, the Barclays motto of recipe K for them, keeping the end in view, basically segued out of strive, grow and succeed. You know, for those of us who out, had the opportunity to go to both institutions. And so I agree with uh, Mr. Wilkinson that Strive, Grow, and Succeed is, is, yeah, definitely the number one school motto on the island. We have all Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We hear you. <laughs> yeah. But you've shared, you've shared quite a bit with us, us, um, and I'm I'm a girl from from the West End, so I know a lot of this. But it it was it's good to hear about some of those iconic people that we would know went to West End, and we would never know they ended up going to Dalton E. Tucker. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I say I, I was very surprised myself. It was certain things, of course. Uh, that's why technology is is very it's amazing. I was certain. I just automatically do it. Um, but then I see where I did some history myself. And of course, I said, you got like Kim Swan, we, we talked for almost eight hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he talked to Kim, he tried to talk for a minute, yeah. and then it turned into an hour, an yeah. hour turned into a day. Yeah, so I said, so even when it comes to, I said, going back to community um, national award. So going back to Kim Swan, he was one, he became a professional golf player he was in um so there's another person who he has definitely i said of course i'm a, I'm a pe teacher so i try to recognize mm -hmm. athletic success going back to kimberly 
Jackson, her brother, mm -hmm. of course, her brother is Kenny. Thompson. And so pretty much Thompson. he has a, big, a major impact to success as far as, of course, is still part of the, the international team. He's the um, assistant coach. So there's just so many people when it comes to the actual community. I think that once again, they have strived, grew, and succeeded from this school. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Kenny Thompson, as Mr. Wilkinson alluded to, you already mentioned Kevin Smith, Mr. May 24th, who has nine championships in terms of May 24th. And we all know Mr. Uh, Wilkinson's father, Mr. Gary Wilkinson, I believe, was also a May 24th champion. Yeah. And so, again, that, that is uh, something that all should be noted, also should be noted. And in golf, because the Port Royal Golf Course was right there, you had Kim Swan, you had my brother Canal Bean, you had Duane Pearman, you had Darren Woods, and you had many golfers, uh, early golfers. When I say early, because golf became popular uh, in the 1970s through, I believe, Mr. Walter King. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Walter King is a person who, a former member of parliament, in fact, from Hamilton Parish, he was a major um, influence in terms of golf in the area. And that's where a lot of these former Southampton Glebe students were able to develop their skills. Uh, I believe that Mr. King's daughter is the current director of youth and sport, Ms. Kimberly Sharice Bean. Yeah, she is. Yeah. And so, again, that is a connection. And then we also have some of the best tennis players. Uh, in Bermuda to come out of the community also. And that is because of the influence of Sam Mabry, Steve Bean, and the current national coach, Mr. Ricky Mallory. You know, and, and they all have children, sons, whatnot, who who were, uh, went uh, to Southampton Glebe. And let me not forget the late, great uh, Mr. Craig Bean, who unfortunately passed away through a road traffic accident down by Five Star Island a few years ago. And he yeah. also, was, and he was, a, he was a great tennis champion, Virginia tennis champion, who I am um, absolutely certain went to Southampton Glebe with his brother, uh, Clay Bean, right. and, yeah, okay. and his sister, Christy. Is that, am I correct? Yeah. Mr. Wilkinson? Yes, yes. And so- He went, yeah, but then he transferred to Port Royal but he started at Southampton. Oh, uh, he went to Port Royal after? Uh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. See, there's a strong, deep rivalry between <laughs> Southampton Glee, first and foremost, and West End. Even though West End it was a two-stream school, so they had double the students we had, we took pride in being able to compete against what, rep what was in the, in the Western parishes, the number one athletic school in the, in, 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 in the country, and to be I, honest. And actually, I want to just touch... I was just going to talk about that because remember, we've always been a one stream school. Mm -hmm. So yes. I'm very statistical. So I think right now we're kind of now we have two P1s, two P2s, two P3s. Mm -hmm. But if we had all that success as a one stream school, imagine if we would imagine the numbers compared to other schools have almost up to 250. I know when I went here, I think we had 110. So imagine the success would have been a little bit higher. You're right. Numbers, numbers don't lie. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think that going back to being a one-stream school, imagine if it was a two-stream. Mm -hmm. Just think yeah. back and analyze that. Quality, quality is definitely the should be the focus of what was produced out of Southampton Glee in the absence of quantity, that's for sure. That's interesting, sharing quite a bit. Right, and I can go back. Once again, like I said, I'm very, I'm very, I like looking up stuff. So, of mm. course, Terry List, of course, right now, he's the actual um, speaker of the house. But ironically, he's actually the longest serving member in parliament. He started in 1989, and he's still yes. in that area. So, that's when he was able to strive, grow, and still succeed. Dennis, so Dennis, Dennis is Dennis. 
I mean, Dennis, yes. Yeah, I'm got it. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, Dennis. Yeah, yeah. Yes, very true. <laughs> Boy, this exercise making me feel proud, to be honest. You know. Yeah, just to think about it, just to have the memory and to realize that we had so many prominent persons in the island that made such a large impact in the island come out of uh, basically the best community in the island. You know what I mean? I, I can't. I can't express it even more. It's very, very edifying to be able to hear the information that Mr. Wilkinson mm-hmm. sharing and, and that was sharing. And I think that it's, it should be it should be indicative of the need to to retain our history and our culture, because schools are not just buildings to impart knowledge, but strive, grow, and succeed was and is. A, a standard by which we should always aim towards. And so it became basically a part of the ethos of the community, not just within the classroom, but outside of the classroom. In other words, whatever the reform committee is thinking about, mm-hmm. uh, Dalton and Tucker should be regarded with and held up with the respect that it deserves. I'm just putting that marker there for the minister and others who will be interested in making decisions in the future. Um, yeah, it, it's something that you shouldn't take lightly because in the removal of one's culture, you're removing a person's purpose and rudder and direction. You know, So any reform process that occurs should be one that is done where you, you measure twice and you cut once. Mm-hmm. For lack of a better term, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Thank you. You share quite a bit. Um, you know, I'm I'm learning some stuff from about my cousins over at um, Granite Heights. I'll I'll call them and verify. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, we we've recorded everything. Um, as I said, the video, uh, the recording from um, will will serve as the official racket, so we will have it here. Um, right. And the next steps for us is we will do our rating. Um, we send the information up to the minister, and everything is decided at the minister's level. Um, I believe he will consult with his cabinet colleagues. But um, our job is just to collect information and pass it on. No problem. Yeah. So it's nice to meet you. Um, and nice to see you again, Mr. Bean. I think the last time I heard of you, my niece Monika's dogs were running over the hill and causing some problems a few years ago for you. But um, uh, yes. <laughs> yes, hope you absolutely. sorted that out. <laughs> yes, yes. One of the biggest issues, one of the biggest issues that a government minister could face is the issue of dogs. Mm-hmm. You'd be surprised. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You'd yeah. be surprised. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, it's been a pleasure, Miss P.S. Yeah, it's been it is. A I've just been, been good to see you. Um, Carla, did you have any questions? Yeah. I really, really enjoyed your presentation. I'm from St. George's, so I don't know anything about you lot, but I think it's <laughs> amazing. What a great, great history you guys have, and you're making our job very difficult. Um, but Mr. Wilkinson, have you looked into your family history? Like, have you found that maybe you're related to Governor Wilkinson? Because that could be another historical part that we don't know about. Like, maybe he owned people, and you could have been a descendant. No, right. So you probably know, right. So you're, you're from down the east. So you probably know Michelle Wilkinson. She was in my class at Barclay. So my I have Wilkinsons from Camp Peel. That's my family's originally from Camp Peel, the, the best parish of Hampton. Once again, just want to analyze it. <laughs> so <that's, laughs> yeah. So my Wilkinsons are from Southampton, Camp Peel area. But I, I know a lot of Wilkinsons down the east. Area because I said because Michelle was in my class at Barkley, so we always used to see if we're cousins or not. 
but I, I have tried to do some research on other family members and that may be Wilkinson's, but. Well, it's so cool. And I feel like I'm all in now. So let me know if you need help. <laughs> um, really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, Ms. Bean, uh, you may recall that I was the person who um, had the Salabeset project. That was my project. Getting Ooh, the statue, yeah. getting good. it erected, doing the whole thing, getting the um, bronze narrative and making them redo the base because it wasn't perfectly round and all of that. But um, <laughs> yeah, that history, that meant a lot, which is why we put it right on the cabinet rounds. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm glad that you reminded me yeah. of that because I can recall I, I was there in present. Yeah. And it yeah, does show you the significance of the area, you yeah. know, in terms of, of what I, we had discussed earlier, mm -hmm. that Sally Bassett, came out of she she came out of Jennings Bay. Yeah. So and Jennings Bay is just down the road and around the corner. And that's very important. And let me one more bit of history is that the the White Hill field, for instance, I came to learn uh, a year ago as a result of reading Jamal Simmons, MP Jamal Simmons's mother, Mrs. Snape. Mm -hmm. Her she because she's like she provides so much history in her op-eds into the Royal Gazette. And this time she was speaking about Mr. Dick Richards, who was the owner of and proprietor of the Canadian Hotel, I believe, mm -hmm. who was one of the wealthiest black men in the country at that time, self-made. And Mr. Richards actually earned half of White Hill Field and the Goslings earned the other half. And it was at the White Hill Field that I had came to learn that we actually had our first women's cup match oh. in the 1930s. And when she wrote that, it jogged my memory because I had heard information from my great, great auntie, my great auntie, Miss Iola Busby, Aunt Iola. She actually was, she used to say, I used to play cricket too. And I didn't understand what she meant by it, you know. But I didn't realize that there was a women's cup match mm -hmm. that was held in the area again. And so it's very important for us to remember that Southampton Glebe was the center of basically a cultural, uh, is a cultural heavyweight of an area for the country, you know, Idiot. rather it range from sports, um, from then up until today, where you see a Kevin Smith and others who are legendary in terms of uh, running in May 24, uh, right up until, right from from then until now. So it's important that I like to reemphasize mm -hmm. your your team, the the value of what Southampton Glebe uh, brought and still brings, and I still call it Southampton Glebe. Uh, even though it's now called Dalton Tucker, you know, I, I can honestly tell you that I remember my mother speaking about Mrs. Tucker. And she and she always said that she was very firm, but very fair. Mm -hmm. I couldn't relate. I never met her. You know, she was what they would say before my time. But the fact that we there named Southampton Glebe after her, I think, was significant and very important as well. Mm -hmm. And out of out of respect to her and the rest of the community, I think that it's very important to emphasize that whatever decisions are made in the future regarding school reform, that that degree of, of honor is, is offered or remembered by the decision makers when you're making any decisions in regards to how you're gonna proceed with this reform process. All right. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you. Uh, did you have something else to say, Mr. Wilkinson? No, I just wanted to kind of um, talk about Mr. what he was talking about. Like, I just think going to our school, based off where we're located now, I know the questions wasn't really put in, but I just think the way how the whole format of our school, we have the wonderful field, is nowhere close to the road. You'd right. be surprised that we celebrate our history when there's so many tourists just walk across those tracks. And I asked so many different questions. So we kind of advertise our country and our culture and our education 
just because of where we were located. Mm. We're, like a, we're like a perfect advertising place to be for safety and for advertising. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's good. Um, so if there's nothing else, um, again, we will um, do our rating and pass it on to the minister. And uh, the minister is well has indicated that he will make a decision within the next two weeks. So you'll hear more at that time. All right. All right. Thank you, so Pierre. thank you. Thank All you right. for your time. All thank right. you, man. Take care. Yeah, thank you very much. Right. Appreciate yeah. it. All righty. Okay, bye. Have a good Easter. Bye -bye. You too. Right. You Peace too. Bye-bye. Well.